How you doing there folks? Baders here for another Top 10. This week we're going to be looking at the Top 10 Best Fun Mods in Fallout 4 so far. I know what you're thinking, how the fuck do we come up with such cool titles? Well the trick is, to fall down a flight of stairs, brain first. Yeah. However with all that said, these mods really are a ton of fun to use and hopefully you'll enjoy them in your playthrough. Now if you play on PlayStation, keep your eyes open wide as fuck for this symbol and if you play on Xbox, keep your bum cheeks open for this symbol as those are indicators that that mod featured is available on your console. Now we do all our mod reviews on the PC version of Fallout 4 so every mod featured is available for PC gamers. Now go ahead and get awkwardly close to your screen, take off your banana hammocks and let's get to average baiting baby! At number 10, we've got Sunshine Tidings Wild West by Greek Rage. I don't know about you guys, but when I first saw the Nuka World trailer, I was really excited about the Wild West theme park that I saw in the trailers. In fact, I was so excited I couldn't sleep. I was up all night doing t totally normal things. However, when I finally got there, I didn't quite get my fix in terms of the Wild West theme. This mod sorts all that and it turns the Sunshine Tidy Settlement into that Wild West fantasy that I was truly hoping for in Nuka World. This mod reminds me of a simpler time when people laid down roots because they were afraid to travel, because they were still worried that if you sailed out too far you could fall right off the edge of the planet. When people didn't argue about who uses which bathroom, because taking a shit was a life threatening event that everybody did outside. And if you weren't careful, a snake could bite you right on the dick and give you tuberculosis. Not like nowadays, nowadays everything's got rules and regulations and shit. I just don't get it. I don't get how you can sell your sperm and make a profit, but people get all judgy when you try to sell a whole kid. Which is just like a really old sperm with a name and tiny clothing. Now before this mod, Sunshine Tidings is one of those settlements that no matter what you did to it, there was no way not to make it look like a steaming pile of shit. So this mod really kills two birds with one hammer. It gives people who are really into westerns a place to go where they can get their wild west on, and it also adds an awesome settlement to the game that replaces Sunshine Tidings. This mod is remarkably well done and it has all the fixtures you'd hope to find when you entered an old western style town. From the two story building design, to a guy who'd been recently hanged to death for using too many big words. Honestly, when you walk into this settlement, it can almost feel like a different game altogether. The atmosphere is right out of an old movie, especially at night when the fog rolls in and makes this settlement truly something to gawk at. Note that the workshop is hovering over the river when you first download this mod, so it is a good idea to use a mod to be able to put it in a more realistic position. The one that we used was the workshop moving mod. Now even though the buildings are already designed, a lot of them are still empty, giving you the ability to decorate the town any way you like, really making it your own. Now this is an excellent mod that adds a settlement like no other I've ever seen in Fallout before, and really makes you think you're walking into a different part of the world altogether. I would recommend this mod to anyone who wants an awesome settlement, but really doesn't want to build it themselves. I rate this mod one monkey who's got really weird nipples. I just can't look away. At number 9 we've got Wastelanders XM 2076 by Giggity12345. This mod adds the type of rifle to the game that if you walk around with it a little too confidently, people will actually think you're a murderer and that you're hunting human beings. What I don't get about the whole murderer thing is that they never call a bear a murderer when they kill something that gets a little too close to their cave, but apparently I'm the bad guy when one mailman goes missing? Pfft, lawyers, right? Always throwing around them big buzzwords like alibi and murderer and crazy, man. Now if it's crazy to chase an old lady down the street with a machete screaming, I'm gonna fucking kill you! Well, then I guess I'm crazy. But how else are people gonna learn not to look directly at me? All right, that definitely took a weird turn, didn't it? Anyways, as we all know, the snipers in the base vanilla version of Fallout 4 are lacking to say the least. Now this mod adds a sniper rifle to the game that just fits in so well to the world. Its modern design looks like something that could have been manufactured in the world of Fallout, but also it's a sniper that's not too big and bulky, like my penis, but it still packs enough damage to kill what you're shooting at in one hit, which is what you want in a sniper rifle, right? You don't want to just wound them so they can run off and warn their 
friends and say, Hey, that weird guy's in the bushes again, but now he's got a gun. Now, this mod adds a highly modular sniper rifle based on the XM2010 Remington used by the US military. This weapon has loads of customization options, including five camos, four muzzles, three barrels, six sights, six receivers, and one stock. It also comes with its own custom sounds and animations that really make this weapon look and sound realistic. There is also a unique variant of this weapon hidden throughout the world called the Bad Animator. It's so immersive! Now, if you want to locate this weapon, you can find it just outside of Vault 111 on top of a metal crate, meaning you'll have access to this weapon very early on in your playthrough of the game, which is great. Now, this is an excellent mod that adds more variety to the sniping in Fallout 4. I rate this mod one zoo where people are the exhibit and the animals pay to see them. Look, honey, the fat one just winked at me. Let's throw dirt in his eyes. At number 8, we've got Breakable Wooden Doors by Ulithium Dragon. Wooden doors that aren't breakable are so immersion breaking, it makes me want to punch someone directly in the nipples. Huh. Ah, that really hurt. Well, with this mod installed, that will no longer be an issue, and nipples everywhere will be able to sleep easy, knowing my nipple punching days are over. With this mod installed, you'll be able to blow up any vanilla wooden doors that fuck with you or talk shit behind your back. This is not only a lot of fun, but it's incredibly satisfying to do so, and functionally very effective. Now, the doors in your settlement will be affected as well, as there's no way to segregate them from the other doors. However, they have been given a crazy high health bar, so it would actually take a lot of firepower to huff and puff and blow those doors down. Also, NPCs won't actually attack doors that they can't get in, as this is something that was never programmed into the game to begin with, meaning that if you have locked doors in your settlement, they'll be safe from prying eyes. Furthermore, the mod author didn't change any of the load doors for obvious reasons, as this could affect the functionality of the game. Now, closed wooden doors will no longer give you a headache, and you'll be able to show all your friends how cool you are with dramatic, incredibly impractical entrances. I would recommend this mod to anyone playing the game, as it bumps up the immersion to a whole new level, and does it in a very fun way. I rate this mod one bird that is remarkably good at sucking his own penis. Would you look at that? At number 7, we've got Combat Zone Restored by Barbarica. Now, if you've ever been to the combat zone in the vanilla version of Fallout, you'll know just how disappointing it can be. Now, when I first saw it, I remember thinking to myself, great, a place I can go where I can get paid to whoop ass. Which is perfect, because I recently got my PhD in ass smacking. Let's just say I got a hefty student loan to pay back, so line those butt cheeks up in alphabetical order. And then come to find out, you can't actually fight in the ring. It was like waking up Christmas morning to find Santa Claus jerking off on your presents. Pretty big fucking letdown. It really was. Well, now the combat zone will be able to live up to its full potential as this mod author was able to add cut content from the game that makes this place not only functional, but fun as fuck. And when you first enter the combat zone, you'll still see Kate kicking the ever-loving fuck out of that first fighter, but after that, you'll be able to take her on 1v1. After you fight Kate, you'll be able to continue to fight in the ring to earn caps and level up as a combat contestant. And the more you fight, the harder your opponents will get. You can also spectate other fights and bet on those fights, which is an excellent feature. But it is bittersweet for me because I'm actually not very good at gambling. Put it this way, if I had a cap for every time I put all my piggy bank money on the wrong horse, then I'd have enough money to pay off the bookie and he wouldn't have to break my running legs. Now with this mod installed, it doesn't matter if your character is big, small, fat, or skinny, you'll be able to beat 10 shades of fuck out of so-called opponents like this armorless ass clown here. Now this mod is a ton of fun. A couple notes though about getting it to work. If you're having any trouble, you can always try sitting and waiting for a little bit as that does seem to help. Also, if the first fight with Kate won't start, there is an optional script that can be downloaded as a workaround. Now the mod author has stated that this mod works best with a new character playthrough. However, it was working just fine for me on my old saved character. So just a heads up on that one. I rate this mod the type of crazy that shows up six months into a new relationship. I'm not a jealous woman, but if you ever look at another girl, I'll kill everything you ever loved. At number six, we've got Cross Jetpack by Nero. You remember when you were children and your parents said, don't play with rockets, but you were all like, fuck that, and you ended up sending your pet turtle into the stratosphere? Poor Wiggles, he will be missed. God rest his adventurous soul. This mod is just like that, except now you're the turtle. 
Let's face it, jetpacks? They're one of the funnest things there is about Fallout. The ability to jump really high or fly over entire areas of the map really make this game different from the Fallouts before it. It's just one of those features that adds so much in terms of freedom and entertainment that it's only when you try to play Fallout 4 without jetpacks that you realize the impact they have on your playthrough. Now jetpacks are really exciting, they're a lot like that feeling you get when you finally build up the courage to ask the girl of your dreams to marry you. And she just looks you deep in your eyeballs and she says, Hey, could you put your dick away when you're talking to me? Now Nero has built some boner invoking mods for Fallout 4. Every time this mod author makes a new mod, something amazing is added to the game. And this mod is no different. Before this mod, if you wanted your character to use a jetpack, then you would have to get in some power armor and level up to the appropriate level to add a jetpack in the upgrade menu. Well, not anymore, folks. Now you can strap a rocket to the back of your character without a helmet or nothing which will make all the ladies want to rub your nipples. Because if there's one thing women love, it's bad boys who strap rockets to their backs all willy-nilly. Now even though there are other mod authors who have created non-power armor jetpacks, what makes Nero's version so special is that this mod doesn't just add a jetpack to the game, it actually makes the personal jetpack functional and visually appealing. So when you use it, you can see like blue and red flames with sparks and shit, rather than just those vanilla ones, those plain old vanilla ones. Also, you can adjust the parameters on the jetpack so it operates in different ways. It can give you a boost when you run, which makes you fast as fuck, or it can make you jump higher with a flight assisted boost like the normal jetpack. Or you can get the best of both worlds when this baby is fully upgraded. Now if you want to acquire this jetpack, you can craft it at the chemistry station under utility. This jetpack is also fully customizable with tons of aesthetic features as well. There are 32 different color combinations to choose from and 3 different upgrades to cycle through, including the assisted sprinter, assisted jumper, and the jetpack that gives you both the jumper and the sprinter all in one. This is an excellent mod that is so much fun to use that I rarely have a character in any of my playthroughs that doesn't have this jetpack on their body at all times. I rate this mod one fish who's on death row. I was framed. At number five, we've got West Tech Tactical Optics by Fading Signal. Let's face it, seeing in the dark is actually really hard to do. I should know that's when I get some of my best stalking done, because I can't see it very good. Yeah. Now, not being able to see things is a serious disadvantage, which is why whenever I see a blind person walking down the street all willy-nilly, I always throw a basketball really hard at their face. Heads up, buddy! <laughs> Just to make sure they're not faking it, because that would be awful and unacceptable social behavior. The normal night vision in the vanilla game is definitely lacking in terms of realism and aesthetic appeal. This mod doesn't only add a great new immersive way to use night vision in the game, it also adds a new style to it as well. When you turn on the goggles, the screen will go blank at first, and it will make the most immersive night vision sound my delicate ears have ever heard. Then once in night vision mode, the world will look like a green-hued orgasm come to life. Giving you the visibility you need to be practical, but does it in such a way that the game still looks amazing. This mod adds new tactical goggles and eyepieces featuring new meshes and textures which are fully modular, craftable, and upgradable at the armor workbench. With three primary vision effects, two secondary enhancements, and eight color variations. The base goggles give plus one to perception and a combination of modifications that can be added to customize them to your particular playstyle or appearance. Now these goggles operate like real night vision, temporarily blinding you when you shut them off, and if you find yourself in front of a bright light with these babies on, it's unlikely you'll be able to see anything at all. These tactical goggles are so well done that they've actually helped me get over my fear of the dark. Now I know what a lot of you are thinking, aren't you a bit old to be afraid of the dark? Well, put it this way, I'll stop being afraid of the dark when my cat stops leaving me death threats in the steam on my bathroom mirror after I have a shower. Yeah. I woke up the other day, and he was standing over me, holding a pillow. He acted all cool and shit, but we both know what he was thinking. Now there are two other visual variations of these goggles, other than the night vision, that work great and really give these goggles a lot in terms of variety. These tactical eyepieces look incredible and are extremely well done in every aspect. It's not only way more interesting to play during nighttime in the game now, it's actually a lot more fun. Now in order to craft this tactical eyewear, you'll first need to acquire the blueprints for them. Now these blueprints are located at the MedTech Research Building in the main lobby under a desk. Once you have acquired the blueprints, you'll be able to craft these goggles at the chem station under utility. I rate this mod one job interview that isn't going very well. 
Is it the tie or is it because I farted when we first met? At number four, we've got Zombie Walkers by Joe Forsyth. Now, zombies actually scare the sweet living bejesus out of me. There's just something about a lifeless, titty-twisting cannibal that just puts me on edge. Call me crazy. Now, one of the things that is so frightening about a zombie apocalypse are the zombies themselves. There are really two types of zombies. There's the fastest fuck zombies, like in 28 Days Later or in World War Z, which are terrifying and they just feel exhausting. I feel like there's no way I'd get away. They'd grab my leg, they'd snatch me up, and they'd eat my fucking brain. Then there are the slow zombies, like in The Walking Dead or Dawn of the Dead or movies like that, which I'd prefer because they feel like, hey, I want to eat you, but I can wait. I can wait. The ghouls in Fallout 4 are definitely not zombies. Now, I know this because I have the internet. But they do share a lot of similar characteristics to that of a zombie, right? With their scuzzy hair, their funky faces, and their crappy slashed up clothing, they, they really look like zombies. And being as how Fallout is a post-apocalyptic setting, it really isn't that far-fetched to want to turn it into more of a zombie thriller. Now, if you have a great imagination, you can already kind of picture the ghouls as zombies, but they'd be the fast ones, and that's exhausting. So if you want them to be slow and shit, you're gonna need this mod to overhaul the zombies to make them act more like them slow sons of bitches we all know and love. This mod reduces the running speed of the ghouls in the game as well as eliminates their ability to sprint, dodge, or turn 180 degrees. The attack base damage though has been doubled, so now when they do catch you, they'll be even more of a threat. There's also a stagger effect that's been added as well that knocks you back when the fuckers hit you. This mod also changes the durability of the ghouls, which makes them a lot tougher and harder to kill. Their spawn variety has also been affected, so you'll see more types at once when they spawn in. Now there is also a configuration holotape that comes with this mod on so you can change it up depending on your preferences. You can set it up so it's headshot only mode, meaning that the zombies keep on coming until you shoot them right in their goddamn faces. I would highly recommend this mode as it makes the ghouls really feel like a threat as zombies rather than just slow moving ghouls. So you gotta remember when this setting is on, body shots they don't do shit. Nope, didn't hurt, didn't feel it, did not feel that. I think a mosquito bit me right on the butt cheek. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, uh, I didn't feel that. Uh... Excuse me. Are you trying to hurt me right now? Are you are you softly slapping me in the back? Because that's what it feels like. Nope, still nothing. No, didn't feel it. No, 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 no. Feeling good here. Can't hurt me. I'm pretty much invincible. Nope, didn't feel that either. Did not feel that one. Oh my god, that one, that one really hurt. That one really stung. That one got me. I mean, I'm just fucking with you. I didn't. I didn't feel a thing. This mod really makes the ghouls feel a lot more like zombies than ghouls in the game, which can completely change your perspective of the world, making it feel a lot more like a zombie apocalypse than a nuclear fallout. This idea can be a lot of fun, as now the ghouls play a very different role in the game and become this whole new element to avoid when exploring the commonwealth. I rate this mod the face everyone makes when someone jams two fingers right up their butthole. Wow, really wasn't expecting that second one. It's kind of nice. At number three, we've got War Machine by NewerMind43. Now, I can remember back in the day when I thought that I was a superhero. I would get all dressed up in my tights and just go out late at night and throw jelly beans at suspicious looking people. Yeah, take that! Hey, buddy, what the hell? Justice has been served! Now, the local paper had a name for me. They called me that lunatic with a handful of jelly beans. I mean, it didn't have the same ring to it as Iron Man or War Machine, but it was still my call sign. Now, I also asked the commissioner to make a fog light that just had the letters L-W-A-H-O-J-B on it, which is lunatic with a handful of jelly beans. He could just shine that up in the sky like the bat signal, and boom, I'd be there with, uh, with a jar full of jelly beans. But I couldn't have a serious conversation with him because he just started freaking out asking me how I ended up behind his shower curtains. So I just threw a bunch of jelly beans at him and left. Ah, jelly beans! Now, is there anything more exciting and fun than being a superhero? The answer is no. No, there is not. However, there is a close second, and that's being a sidekick who's got all the goodies as the main guy. And War Machine is that very sidekick. Now, he works with Tony Stark to rid the Marvel Universe of injustice. This mod adds War Machine to the world of Fallout with a design that is very well done. This is a power armor mod and unlike any other superhero mod that I've seen before, this mod actually feels like a suit of armor. The animations of the power armor combined with the armor itself just make this armor fit into the world of Fallout so well. This mod adds a sense of realism to a fictitious character which is all the more impressive. Now War Machine may not be the most immersive seeing as how he is from the Marvel Universe, but I'll tell you, this armor is more fun than a hungry gerbil and a buttful of peanut butter.
Now, if you want to acquire this epic armor, you can find it at the Adam Toys factory on the roof in a cage. Now, you're going to have to kill some super mutants to get to it, but it's worth it. Also, note that the gun over the right shoulder doesn't work at the moment, but hopefully the mod author makes that baby work in the future, as that would be fun as shit. This mod comes in four different colors, which are black, chrome, patriot colors, and the Iron Man colors. All the colors look great and really give each variant a new feel in the game. Now this armor, it just looks and functions great in the game, but it's not all aesthetics, no, no. It's fully customizable at the Power Armor Station, and it even has upgrades. And some of those upgrades let you put jetpacks in the fucking suit, which is super cool. I mean, this armor is a lot of fun, and it makes you feel like an actual superhero when you're exploring the Commonwealth. It also fits into the game really nice because it's been implemented as a type of power armor, meaning you can go through your playthrough with this mod installed and still feel immersed in the world. It doesn't break the fourth wall even though it should, and that's because the mod author did such a great job integrating this armor into the power armor design. I rate this mod one chicken smoking a cigarette. Why am I smoking this? Because I want to. Because. At number two, we've got the Black Widow Armor by Deserter X. This mod adds an amazing armor to the game that is both masterfully crafted and functionally delightful. This mod also adds a Black Widow Pit Boy to the game and an optional retexture file for the Widow Shotgun, which goes great with this armor. Now, the Widow Shotgun and this armor are not made by the same person, but boy, do they look good together. There is also a great backstory on this armor as well about a lady who lost her husband and then went batshit crazy and started killing people. Now, if you're looking to acquire this armor, you can find it at the Wildwood Cemetery by one of the gravestones. You'll see a skeleton lady just chilling with a crate filled with goodies. The textures and meshes for this armor look incredible, combining a long Grim Reaper style coat, a faceless mask, and a steel armor underneath to give your character that look of someone who brings death everywhere they go. Now this armor does work with both body types, but does look like it was designed specifically for female characters. And although this suit was designed for women, it's just so nice that I'd have no problem tucking my dick and balls between my ass cheeks just to make it fit. And even though it's kind of fun running around the Commonwealth as a gender-confused Grim Reaper, it would be awesome to see a male-specific variant of this armor in the future. However, the mod author has not indicated this as being a future update. But who knows what's gonna happen, right? I mean, a girl can dream, can't she? Speaking of the Grim Reaper, this suit looks so badass, I feel like the Black Widow would be the person they send to actually kill the Grim Reaper. Time's up, Mr. Reaper. You better get your shit together. No. Don't do this. I'm too young and beautiful. I know. Take Doreen. She smells like stale Doritos and she's got two lazy eyes. Now this armor isn't just for show, no no. It has functional properties as well, including the ability to change between worlds. You can go from the normal world to the underworld in this armor, which gives you the ability to detect the souls of your enemies. All you have to do is visit an ordinary armor workbench to enable this feature. Now there is different first and third person views of the world, so when you're in first person, you can go into the underworld view, and when you're in third person, you can back out into the normal world. Now the transition happens with a transitional sound. This armor is also fully customizable at the workbench, so you can upgrade it so hard, it will make your fingers sticky. The coat itself has functional physics in the game. Now they may not be perfect, but I think the mod author did an excellent job making them work in the game. This mod really is one of a kind and a truly excellent Excellent addition to Fallout 4. I would recommend this mod to anyone's playthrough of the game, especially if you enjoy looking like a fucking badass. I rate this mod the one expression everyone makes when someone is about to steal their machine at the gym. No! I've got one set left! And at the number one spot, we've got Chinese Stealth Suit by Unoctium. Now I once had a friend that was a ninja and he was actually so good at being invisible that one time he snuck right up behind me and he pressed his penis right against my face. I didn't even know what happened until three days later. You know what's really weird? Is I don't have any friends. So whose penis touched me in the face? Now for those of you who've never read a book on ninjutsu, you might not know the secrets to invisibility. So let me help you out. The key to being invisible is to not be seen by other people. Now your three best tools for achieving this are your bushes, closets, and other places that people might not see you in. Got it? Good. 
This mod brings back a fan favorite suit from Fallout 3 and Fallout New Vegas, but does so in a very new and original way. The stealth suit in Fallout has been known for having some functionality perks associated with it, most notably the ability to be less detectable when crouched. Now this suit does do more than just make you stealthy. It also makes you more Chinese, which is great if you ever want to visit Hong Kong and put some dumplings in your mouth. This suit has a ton of different customization options that really make it unique and fun to use in Fallout. You can even upgrade this suit to make you faster and jump higher while wearing it. Now there are also some eyewear modifications for this mod as well. There are also some combat perks like increased stealth during crouching, a cool explosive landing, and my personal favorite, a type of electromagnetic field which seemingly teleports you through your enemies, killing them all along the way. Now these functions not only make the suit a lot more immersive in the game, but really make this suit a ton of fun to use. Now, this new version of the Chinese stealth suit has a variety of aesthetic customization options as well. Ones that change the color of the suit, while others that completely change the design, giving it a more armored or stealthy looking appearance. All of the variants look incredible and make this armor come to life in the game. Now, if you want to acquire this armor, you can find it in the Chinese submarine just off the coast. Now, for those of you who haven't located the Chinese submarine just yet, spoiler alert, it's right here. Once you go inside, go down to the second floor and you'll find this bad boy in a control room on top of a bunch of monitors. Now, the mod author has stated that this mod is currently in its alpha stage and that he will continue to work on it in the future, eventually adding a quest to it to solidify its immersion in the game. This mod is very well done and by far one of the best armor mods in the game. I rate this mod one neighbor who's always angry and maybe a little psycho. Yeah, your toddler, he stepped in my garden. If it happens again, I'm gonna UFC style fight him in the backyard. Thanks again for watching, guys and girls. If you enjoyed this video, then go ahead and smush down on that subscribe button with the tip of your penis. And come back for more fun next time. Remember to follow us on Twitter to find out when we'll be doing live streams and other useful updates. The link will be in the description. Now, if you want to view another Fallout 4 Top 10, then go ahead and click that blue box to your left. And if you want to watch Batman play Fallout 4, then go ahead and click that blue box to your right. Hope to see you all again next time for another Top 10.